won't forget the moment I heard you call my name Out of the grip of darkness Into the light of grace Just like Lazarus You brought me back to life Where there was dead religion Now there is living faith All of my hope and freedom I found in Jesus' name Just like Lazarus You brought me back to life Worshiping the Lord together, yes. being in His presence, I couldn't think of a better way. I tell you what, today is a brand new year starting day for you and you're starting it with the presence of the Lord. Yes. It's going to be fun, but I want you to know God has an incredible word for you today. Um, Gabe Valenzuela is speaking today, which is going to be fun. powerful. Yes. Yeah. But I'm sure very funny as well. Yeah. Knowing Gabe. Hey, welcome from wherever you're watching. Welcome, and um, here's a question for you. I want you to type this in. I asked this to my boys the other night. I said, fellas, this is two of our boys anyway, um, how did God reveal himself to you last year? Mm-hmm. And what, what, did he, what did he reveal himself to you as? Now, my 10-year-old said fat, <laughs> and I was like, okay, let's talk about that. And I think he meant abundant, yes. you know, 
prosperous, beautiful. Then my you talk about Jesus and us being the fa- the root of fatness yes. in the Bible. So. Yeah, I think he's latched onto that yes. one. But my our thirteen year old, he said he thought about it for a while and he said God showed me Himself as someone who's wants us to not be hard on ourselves. Yeah. And I said, what did you just say? He said, yeah, God doesn't want us to be hard on ourselves. That's really He's good. kind. And that, that was such a powerful moment. So that's my question to you. How did God reveal himself to you in 2022? Type it into the chat. We'd love you to hear that. I had God reveal himself to me as a father. Mm-hmm. And I had, I've had three significant fathers over the last year um, jump into my life and just speak direction and wisdom and just kindness. So, yeah, how did God reveal himself to you in 2022? Let us know in the chat. Yeah, and also think about what do you want God to reveal this coming year? What do you feel like the Lord's saying to you this year? Yeah. I was listening to uh, a couple of days, two days ago, I think, or yesterday on Instagram, on Bethel's Instagram, we had Haley Braun, Havla Cunnington, yes. Ben Armstrong and Chris Vallotton all giving prophetic insight into this year coming year. If you didn't watch that, jump on Instagram if you're on and go have a listen to what they shared about. It's about, um, Chris shared his word about holy disruption and the quaking in the spirit and just this purification that's happening as well as, you know, looking forward to the, there is a time coming very soon where we feel like the Lord is just going to come through and cut through some of the darkness in a, in a radical way and a reforming way. And I'm so excited for that what the Lord is going to do. So go jump on that as well and to hear from what our prophets are saying that the Lord is sharing for this year. I love it. Um, People, Helen's written, God revealed himself to me um, as someone to rest in him and stop striving. That's that's a good father. You know, it's good when God reveals, when he does a miracle in your life or a testimony, he's revealing his nature. Yeah. to you. So reflect on 2022. How did God reveal himself to yeah. you? But get ready for a quaking. Yeah. Get ready for a shaking. I love it. You know, we've, we've been really getting into the, the story of Jesus, watching The Chosen with yeah. our boys and just the shaking that baby Jesus made on the planet, the, the man of Jesus has made on the planet. Get ready. Jesus is Come about on. to turn your world upside down this year. So good. Well, I hope you enjoy this morning. Just get ready to position yourself to encounter the Lord, to worship together and to hear the Word. It's going to be a powerful morning. Like I said, great way to start 2023. So enjoy the morning and we'll see you at the end.
presence tonight. We raise a mighty voice. We'll never stop praying. Oh, that's terrific. If you'd like to worship up front, we'd love to have you worship up front and celebrate the new year in praise and worship. All right, shh, that's enough love. There you go. Happy 2023. It's gonna be a fabulous year in the Lord. He has big plans for this year. And we're just excited to be along on his journey to reconcile the world to himself. He's called us into ministry. He's called you into ministry and mission as well. And we're just so glad you're in the house of the Lord uh, today. I, if you're online, we welcome you as well. Heard two fun testimonies just want to start with and just the beauty of what the Lord's doing. One was just from a, a, a gentleman who's traveling from uh, down south back up to his home up north. He said, uh, I was here 12 years ago and the Lord touched me and changed my life. I needed to stop here again as I was driving through. Talked about an angel visit, being in the prayer house out there, and the Lord just kind of speaking to his heart and ministering to him and establishing him. Such a blessing to just be out there meeting folks. And the guy goes, hey, let me tell you, God rocked me 12 years ago in this place. What a blessing to be in this house, to be a part of this company of people. Again, I know oftentimes when people give that testimony, it, yes, it's supernatural encounters, but oftentimes it's an encounter with you. Like they've met you somewhere in the coffee shop, they've met you somewhere in town, and you spoke a word of encouragement. And when they were just, when they kind of poured out their heart, you didn't go, oh, that, that sounds tough. <laughs> you stepped in 
you stepped in and you spoke a word of encouragement and you joined them in prayer in that moment. It's absolutely beautiful. And then one of our staff members, she's aware of jewelry that uh, through a series of tragedies had been stolen from her several times and she just found them over this last week. They, it's like the Lord kind of brought them all in one place and then she just kind of finds them and goes, I know these were gone, gone. And now they're back. And so, and she had that beautiful moment where she said, it's weird when you get a miracle like that, suddenly you start feeling like, what's real? And we had that when the glory cloud is here, like, was that really happening? Like a miracle sometimes is so catching you off guard. You're like, has reality just shifted? And so it was wonderful to hear, see her and hear her in that moment of like, God's real. Like, Amazing supernatural stuff happens. Like, I know, I know too. So I pray that for you as well. And so let's just turn our hearts to the Lord. Lord Jesus, this, we just are so appreciative. Aren't you appreciative this morning? It's so thankful that you've grabbed a hold of us. With your eyes closed real quick, I'm just, I'm reading a part in the Old Testament that's just tough right now. And as I'm reading it, I'm like, I'm so grateful for the gospel. <laughs> so thankful. God, thank you. You've rescued us from sin and the law. You've rescued us. You've given us the Holy Spirit to indwell us. You've, caught, you've enabled us to live in virtue with one another, loving our neighbor, loving you. And so I say, let your gifts be fanned into flame this morning in this house, in this company of believers, beautifully and powerfully. And we have come to worship you. We ask for your... your um, your grace, your energy, your insight, that we might praise you accurately. We might praise you wholeheartedly with great purpose and intention. We, we look for your blessing this morning in the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Well, as I mentioned, you can feel free to worship up front, but let's enjoy the Lord's presence.
living flame.
Pray. 
time and lift our hands to the Lord. Could 
stand with us because we're going to pray together. One of the greatest mysteries for me personally in my walk with the Lord is trying to figure out when he wants to do something for me and when he wants to do something through me because they're completely different. One is I stand by and I see the salvation of the Lord. I watch him act on my behalf. And the other is, it won't happen unless I do something. Standing by and watching won't cause anything to happen. There's this moment in Israel's history, the people of God that were living in Samaria were starving, and they were starving bad. They were doing things that were indescribable to stay alive. And a prophet came to him one day and said, tomorrow about this time, you will have abundance. And it was just the most ridiculous prophecy maybe ever given. It was, it was the most unbelievable. In fact, the guy who was kind of in charge mocked the prophet, and the prophet told him, yeah, you won't taste of it because you're going to be dead. And sure enough, he died. He, he didn't get to taste of the bounty. But the next day, bounty broke loose. But there's another story that I actually felt like the Lord brought to mind this morning. It's a personal favorite. It's David. It had just gone through hell. I mean, it had just gone through hell. 
kind of like 2022 for some of you. Just had really gone through a rough patch. And it ended at his absolute lowest point. It's at 1 Samuel 30. And he's lost everything. His wife's kids are gone. All of his friends, everything they own is gone. Family, everything. And then things just got even worse because all of his friends said, let's just kill David. That's going to be the answer. And so he's at his lowest point, and he goes to the Lord. And the Lord says this, pursue. He's telling him, go after your enemy. Pursue him, for you will overtake, and without fail, you will recover all. Pursue, you will overtake, and without fail, you will recover all. Sometimes the Lord brings it into your life, and sometimes we pursue to overtake for our lives. There are moments where you stand by and you watch him work. We've all seen it. He's just out of the blue. Just his grace is demonstrated. But I just have this sense, at least for many of us, that 2023 is going to be a year of pursuit. And the promise is you will recover all. 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 There's like 7,000 promises in the Bible, and they're all looking for a home. There's over 7,000 promises in the Bible. They're looking for a heart to be at rest in, a place where they can germinate and bring forth fruitfulness that brings glory to God in the earth. And I feel like that's us and millions of others, but it includes us. I want us to pray. I want us to pray that the person on your right, on your left, that this would be a year where they recover all. According to Proverbs 6, you don't just recover, it's seven times what you lost. Seven times what you lost. So just put a hand on the shoulder of someone next to you, grab a hand, do something, and just begin to pray for them in a way you wish they'd pray for you. I do encourage you, this time pray out loud. And I want you to pray for the spirit of breakthrough to come upon these that you're praying for. If you're in our online family, I ask you, join with us. Pray for your own household, your own families, that they will experience the God of the breakthrough in 2023. Lift your voices. continue to pray, but now pray with authority. Pray with authority, making decrees over their lives. Make decrees, declarations, declare promises. Just declare over that person, you shall recover all. Declare it again, you shall recover all. It's beautiful. You can drop your hands. Let me, let me pray over you. In fact, I want you to make a confession with me. Just say this with me. The promises of God have a home in me. <laughs> Let's declare that together. The promises of God have a home in me. Father, I ask that literally the spirit of breakthrough, the God of the breakthrough, would rest upon this people and that together we would see things happen that we've only dreamed of. 
and we just declare over one another, you shall recover all. Say it again. You shall recover all. Amen. Amen. Lift up a shout of thanks, will you? All right. You did good. You did really good. Bless someone before you're seated. Thanks. Good morning. All right. You guys are doing good, making your way to your seats. If you have an available seat next to you, could you please just kind of raise your hand and, and for those that are looking to find seats can spot those hands and ask you how many you have there because we've got quite a few people. And if you're looking for an overflow, right to my left, your right in the, in the great room is a great overflow. We have our team in there and some other individuals are in there as well if you're looking for a seat and you don't have one in the sanctuary. All right, we'll take a couple more seconds for you to begin to find your place. We're glad you're with us this morning. You've made it through New Year's Day. You did it, you did it, 2023, it is real, new year, new you. Yeah, what, I was joking with my kids about it, I was like, and new year, new you means all kinds of stuff in my house, I'm like, clean up, um, it, mean, it means you and your sister don't fight. They share a bedroom right now, and so they're four and six, and they're working it out. I'm, uh, we're, we're fan. It's a, it's a, it's a good dynamic. Cause next thing you know, you hear one screaming and one crying. And you're like, what did you, what did you, who, who hit who first? Okay. You're both in trouble. Okay. Either way. All right. We're glad we got everybody a seat and everybody has made their way. Um, if this is your first time with us, we want to take a moment to greet you and thank you for making your way with us this morning. So if this is you, could you please raise your hand in church? Could you greet those if this is their first time with us on new year's day, coming and hanging out with us, keep your hand high because our ushers want to make sure that you get information that you need to get deeper with our community or more information just about being here if you're visiting for the day. We're grateful that you're with us. And I have one verbal announcement before we head into church news. And that is tonight, we have an encounter night, which is at 6 p.m. That is a time of extended ministry to the Lord and to one another. And it's a little bit different than our normal services. This happens periodically throughout the month and throughout the year. So if you're hungry for just, hey, I need some space with God, especially in this new year, you're like, I just want to have this kind of extended time with God. Tonight at 6 p.m. is our encounter night. We have a whole row from Brazil, I've been informed. Is that true? Where are you at? Hey! Hey, hey! I, I'm gonna I'm I'm coming with you because I'm into Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I do it three days a week. I'm coming with you. I'm gonna go learn a little bit, then I'll come back. Um, other than that, we have our church news for you. Happy New Year, Bethel family. We've got some updates for you. Here's the first 2023 church news. As we step into this new year, we wanna make you aware of ways that we can pursue the Lord together in prayer. First, join Ben and Heather Armstrong along with the prophetic and intercession teams on Wednesdays at 7 a.m. in the Great Room. This is a space to pray God's heart over our families and local church. Then on Thursdays at 8 a.m., another early morning, join the outreach team and Chris Valentin as we partner with the Lord and pray for His kingdom to come in our city and nation. If you're looking for ways to get more connected on weekends, check out our Hospitality Volunteer Interest Meeting on January 4th. We are growing our volunteer teams of ushers, greeters, and people to serve in our lobbies on Sundays. Sign up to attend and learn more at Bethel.com slash church news. Ladies! <laughs> we want to invite you to join Havila Cunnington for her brand new Bible study, I Dream Big, starting January 17th. In this three-week in-person Bible study just for Bethel women, we will be empowered to chase dreams God's way. Child care is provided, so grab a friend and register today. The Randy Clark School of Healing and Impartation is an amazing three-day event where we pursue the presence of Jesus and are trained and equipped in releasing His miracles and healing. Watch this testimony of a healing that took place at a previous event and celebrate what God has done and will do again. So what happened to you tonight? I have um, three titanium discs in my neck 
And so my neck is fused. And so um, to raise my head really high, like even during worship or to kiss my husband, he would scooch down because I, I can't do it. And then t- tonight I could... T- yeah. That's it for this week's church news. If you missed any of these announcements, go to Bethel.com slash church news to learn more. Have an amazing week. Would you stand with me for offering? Happy New Year. Thanks God. Sorry, I'm still in awe of that testimony and now I'm doing offering. Um, Is there anyone who has um, any issues with movement in their neck or their shoulder in the room right now? Okay, would you raise your hand? If you're near them, you are our ministry team. Would you ask them, may I lay hands on you? Just lay your hands on them right now. Jesus, we thank you that you move because of who you are, irrespective of time and place. So we just say, do it again. At home right now, if you are standing and that is for you, we declare the finished work of Jesus over your life. Would you pray and release the healing of Jesus over them right now if you're around them? We command every muscle to loosen in Jesus' Name, every nerve to be unpinched. We thank You for full mobility in Jesus' Name. Metal dissolve right now in the Name of Jesus. Full movement in Jesus' Name. Would you test it out just for a second? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. At home, you can let us know in the chat what the Lord is doing. If you felt, if you are are testing out your shoulder or your neck right now and you're experiencing any improvement, would you just raise your hand there? We've got a couple at the back and along the sides. Can we thank Jesus? Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. We're gonna have a ministry team up at the end of the service. And I wanna invite you, if God has done something or is doing something in your body, come to our ministry team, let them know. And we know Jesus prayed in many or declared in many different ways healing over people. And so if there's an improvement and you wanna go home completely healed, come to our ministry team and we wanna pray again for you. Um, Why don't we bring up offering reading number one right now. And uh, I wanna declare a word of the Lord over your life as we do offering. Many people are asking, what is the word of the Lord? Thank you, Pastor Bill, for bringing it to us during a transition from worship. But there's something that's true in every single year. Isaiah 61, Jesus read it about Himself. This is the year, the day of the favour of the Lord. And so if you are wondering what the Word is for the year, it's written in the Word of God for us. So as we declare today's offering, would you receive that, that today is the day. This is the year of the favour of the Lord. Let's read it together. As we receive today's offering, we are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs. Raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decrease, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, beautiful. Would you take your gift in your hands? Jesus, we thank you that you would do immeasurably more than we can ask, think or imagine. And what a privilege to sow into what Jesus is doing on the earth. Would you stay standing with me? We have the privilege of hearing from one of our overseers of second year in BSSM and um, one of my fathers in the faith. And I know so many of you, if you're alumni from BSSM, would you just give a wave right now? If you're online and you're alumni all over the room, you know this man changed your life. Will you welcome Pastor Gabe Valenzuela? (laughs) 
All right, well, some, I, some of you are probably like, that's not Bill. No, I know. Yeah, I'm related. That is true. Thanks, thanks for that, Dan. That's how I keep my job. So how is everyone today? Really good. It's January 1st. You guys are all in church. Real Christians. <laughs> Powerful. Except you weren't at first service, so nominal Christians. Um, if you were at the first service, I'd have been like, that's, the, that's it. But second service, not bad. One o'clock, that, that's painful. Those are painful <laughs> Christians. Um, it's good. Well, we're gonna, we'll have some fun today. We'll chat a bit. We'll see, we'll see how this goes. Um, I just wanna get a look at you. Uh, I'm, I get to uh, be on this stage uh, almost every week, but in, in second year in school ministry. Um, Sundays is a little bit, a little bit of a different ball game. So if you're watching online, good, I guess, good. Uh, no, no, welcome, welcome. That's the right thing to say. Uh, two, <laughs> uh, listen, guys, I can't get fired. I have all these grandkids. So um, I just say whatever, whatever pops out, it's gonna be fine. Bill's really encouraging. He just says, good job, no matter what you do, really, good job. Um, so, and then Chris went to first service and he's not here, so woo, do whatever, uh, do whatever we want. It's gonna be, it's gonna be great. Uh, let me just say, we're, we're coming to the end of our kind of holiday season here at Bethel. Um, I don't know how much longer the Christmas trees will be up, but I'm gonna miss them, to be honest. So it feels very festive and I, I wish the, they're gonna take the lights down from the trees eventually um, uh, this week. So you'll come back next week and it'll just, it'll just be church, hopefully. It's not... <laughs> You know what I mean? It's kind of, I'm going to miss the, the, when you worship and you look back and you see like the random snow falling in the background, gosh, that's just cool. So we're going to go back to the trees probably, you know, the random, the random trees. Um, yeah. Uh, but if you, if you served with us during, uh, there were so many opportunities to serve from, from uh, the, the, the feasts and the, the Christmas uh, things that we do, like we do lots of things. Uh, and you can tell from church news, it doesn't, even, it doesn't stop. January is just another stuff. But if you have volunteered with us, um, uh, we just wanna say thank you so much for doing that. Um, so we know that there's lots of people. This, this doesn't happen, if I'm really honest, the, our culture here, the church doesn't happen because you know, somebody with a pastor at the end of their title does anything, really. It happens because uh, a family gets together and decides to, to help a community. So, uh, so thank you so much. I appreciate it. We appreciate it together. All right, good. If you didn't volunteer, feel shame and you're gonna have so much opportunity uh, next year. All right, okay, good. Um, Bill starts with jokes. So I thought in keeping with a Sunday morning tradition, which uh, Johnson's are big on tradition. I stayed awake till 12.30 last night um, to watch the, um, the ball fall. Uh, on YouTube because we don't have cable, but um, it's truth. So uh, Leah loves, uh, which she's, she's watching today. She's not feeling well, so she's watching, but um, she loves to watch the, uh, the it's a family tradition because we did it more than twice. So now it's uh, every year I have to stay up. <laughs> to be honest, anybody else have a family member like that? It's a tradition. I'm like, no, it doesn't have to be. We can go to bed. <laughs> and tradition over, look, it's amazing. Uh, but so I stayed up, um, to do that. Um, but because we don't, we don't have, you know, the, the satellite anymore. Um, we watch it on YouTube, which is a, not as cool of an experience, you know, um, last year, uh, we did the same thing, watched it on YouTube and then realized at the very end that we were watching 2019's <laughs> ball drop. That's the, listen, that's the honest truth. We watched the whole thing and they were like, happy new year. And I was like, wait, that's not right. That's not right. So we found the right one and then we pressed play. We were more or less within five seconds of the whole thing because we just pressed play on it. But so I stayed up late uh, to, to kiss my wife and go to sleep. That's, that's what happened. Um, just so you know. Anybody else stay up late? No? Everyone with their hand is like under 30. You're like, yeah, everybody over... <laughs> No, no, you stayed up late? Good. My kids were all out. My kids were doing things and um, yeah, I don't care. I went to bed, so it's good. 
Uh, okay, jokes, you ready? I looked, listen, this is my one shot. So I looked for good jokes. Then I thought, this is what I honestly, I thought, I'm gonna crack Mexican jokes. Because I can, right? Because Bill's not gonna get up here and crack, Dan for sure is not gonna get up here and crack Mexican jokes. You know what I'm saying? That's a disaster if Dan does that. We're, if you thought we make the internet, just wait till Dan does that. Well, Dan will be canceled forever. So, um, so you can't tell me anything. What are you gonna say to me? Nothing. I'd crack whatever Mexican jokes I want. Being, you know, of my Mexican descent, I say what I want. And if you leave offended, I don't care. Do you know what I mean? It don't actually, don't bother me any. Um, so I looked for Mexican jokes. Turns out there's not a ton you can say in church, really. <laughs> to be fair, because I, lo- I spent a bit looking on, on lots of different places, and I laughed out loud about some of them, and then I would tell them to my wife, and Leah's like, please don't do that. Don't say that. <laughs> There's some good ones, but they're all inappropriate uh, for church. So, but I have, I have uh, one Mexican joke and then one normal joke. Um, you might not find them funny. I laughed. I thought they were a little bit funny. Uh, if, if you've heard them, that's fine. I've, I've, I, I saw someone actually give this joke and it was funny to me um, and I laughed. So um, feel free to laugh. This is, this is a, a Mexican joke, but feel free. If you're not Mexican, I give you permission right now. <laughs> Whether you're in here or online, you can laugh. God made us different. It's okay. You're going to be fine. All right. I was watching the Discovery Channel the other day and uh, people were speculating on, uh, on who built the pyramids in Egypt and talking about that. And the commentator said, mo- most likely aliens built those, which I find fascinating, right? Um, and if you watch long enough, you too will think aliens potentially <laughs> built those. This is, a, this is a side note, but this happened to me the other day. I woke up, this is true. No, no, listen, listen, this is true. This really happened. This is a while ago, but I woke up uh, just in the morning and Typically, Leah, you know, how'd you sleep? Good. How'd you sleep? Good. Woke up and I said, hey, you know what? She said, what? I said, the earth, it could be flat. Maybe. (laughs) She looked at me like, you're so stupid. (laughs) But anybody ever had this happen? You watch like a random YouTube video when you go to bed and then 45 minutes later, you're like, oh, it might be. (laughs) Like, I don't know the exact science of it, but I've never been up that high, so there's potential. Then just a random YouTube tangent. Okay, no one ever does that? That's fine. It's just me. Anyway, the commentator said, in likelihood, it could be aliens. Um, fascinating. Um, and then I realized that there's pyramids all over Mexico, and no one ever questions who built the pyramids <laughs> in Mexico. Because for whatever reason... When Mexicans build stuff, we're just like, yeah, sure, that's totally true. We, we built that. <laughs> anyway, I thought that was great. It was, it was funny. Some of you don't know if you should laugh. You, you can. And uh, I thought it was great, to be honest. It's, it's an odd sense of pride deep down um, that no one questions who built the pyramids in Mexico. Mexicans, just so you know, the answer is Mexicans built them. Um, uh, this joke is funny to me uh, just because you have to laugh in general. Uh, but moving forward, this is not a Mexican joke. This is just a normal uh, offensive joke. Uh, moving forward in 2023, conspiracy theories will now be known as spoiler alerts. We'll just, um, those will all be spoiler alerts for you guys. So just so you know, yes. I, yeah, if you clap, we just know how you think in life if you... <laughs> If you didn't clap, well, it's okay. We're, uh, we're gonna talk about stuff in the Bible, I think. That's gonna, that'll be a good plan. And then we'll, we'll see. That's good, right? Good. We could just crack jokes and most of you would be like, that church, that was amazing. But um, All right. Uh, this, this is January 1st. When they first asked me if I, if I would preach today, um, originally I was like, no, that's, let's not do that. It's the, it's, the, it's the first of January. And I honestly thought, not because I didn't want to talk. I, I really thought, you know, that should be like a, um, uh, a Bill Johnson message um, or a Chris Valentin message. Not, not because it's Bill and Chris, but because it feels like the first of the year should be like a prophetic kind of declaration where, you know, where are we headed? What season are we in? And to be fair, I, 
I love all the prophetic stuff, but I'm a pastor. So when you're like, what season are we in? I'm like, it's, it's winter time right now. It's not, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like all the prophetic people are like, what's the season we're in? I don't know, it's cold outside. <laughs> wear a jacket and when the seasons change, you'll know because you don't have to wear a jacket no more. <laughs> do you know? I'm just whatever, whatever. So I don't, I don't know what the heck season we're in. I just want to let off the bat, we're going to talk today. I have no idea what season we're in, but um, I feel like I have a word from the Lord and we're going to share it. And if it's not the word from the Lord, well, YouTube has lots of bill on there. Go figure it out, uh, to be honest. But uh, God will often use, uh, this is true, okay. Ser- serious, all ser- serious. We're gonna be serious. We'll joke a bit, we're gonna be serious. Uh, God, God uses all kinds of just natural markers, right? Just in your life to delineate uh, changes. Um, what, you know, sometimes it's a marriage, it's a, you know, birth of a child is a great example, right? Your life goes from whatever it was to completely different in a moment right? Um, uh, sometimes it's even like a, a birthday or something will happen and God will just use that to mark a, a shift, whether it's uh, a shift in your journey with him or um, maybe even in your mindset. So, you know, it's not a coincidence that like, hey, you're in this place, in this moment, the very first of the start of a brand new, a brand new year. So we're going to talk about that today. Um, can I just say that um, before we talk about the, the new year, last year was, uh, what's, the, what's the Steve Backlund? What, unique, it was unique. There's a lot of opportunity. That's what Steve would say. There's lots of opportunity in last year. Anybody feel that, yes. right? And when I say opportunity, you guys know, to, like super Christians are like, yes, the Lord's amazing. And that's true, amazing, blessing. There's been some really great things that happened in our, in, in our house, even with our family, personally, some really, some really amazing things. But um, 2022, uh, was a bit of a challenge. Is that true for anybody? Yeah? Anybody not find it a challenge? We hate you, by the way, if that's... You. No, I'm just kidding. We, don't, we love you with the love of the Lord, which is in the Bible. All right? Um, it was, it's been a challenging year. Uh, you know, we've, we've been challenged by, by prophets and teachers to make sure that we as a house um, maintain, you know, and, and keep the fire that, that God built here and birthed here, we've been challenged, you know, just in our, in our own unique walks with the Lord. As a, as a community, we've been challenged, you know, um, we lost Benny and that was a, that was a challenge. Um, I'm on, we're streaming now, so I, I can't say, I don't think I can say what I said. The first, well, the first service, I was like, it's like you get kicked in the junk. Uh, I don't know that I can say that, but that's just normal. We'll be, we'll just be me at this point, right? So yeah, it, it was, it was tough. Um, you know, those are, those are tough moments. And so if I can just talk to you today a bit, just as a, as a family. So listen, this is, this is us. There was a few moments in 2022 that if I'm just all honesty, I was like, Idaho looks awesome. <laughs> Anybody have those like 2022, I was like Montana, Idaho, I don't know, somewhere where I just am alone and people leave me alone, just sounds great. Whatever alone is, let's do that. But to be fair, if you're here, you're here. Like you should have left a long time ago. I just want you to know that. <laughs> You're stuck now. You're in the family. You're here. This, we're doing this together. Whether you want to do it or not, we're, we're a family. And, you know, like any family, look, there's, you have the amazing aunt and uncle, and then you have the crazy, right? And some, some, some of you, some of you are the crazy. You just don't, you don't know. No one tells you. Um, you know, but, you know. Um, anyway, it was, a, it was a challenging year. I heard someone, uh, someone told me, you know, this 2000, 2022 was like a roller coaster, roller coaster of a year. And I thought, what roller coaster have you been on? You've been on like the, you know, like Magic Mountain kind of Six Flags roller coaster. M- my roller coaster was the, the janky roller coaster they set up at the parking lot in the mall. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Where you're like on it and then you look over and the, the bolts are like wobbly. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? And you're just like, please, Lord, please. Yeah. Uh, so I want to speak to a few of you. This might not be all of you. It might just be a few of you, but I felt like I was supposed to bring this uh, from the Lord. So we're just going to go. We're going to try. And, uh, and if it speaks to you, great. Like I said, if it doesn't, read your Bible. Okay. Uh, well, in, in your word, 1 Samuel 16, I'm going to share today. The scriptures are, are scriptures that most of you would know. You've read. You've, uh, you know, you probably know these scriptures by heart. Um, but in 1 Samuel 16, Samuel goes to find 
uh, a king. And we all know the story that he um, goes to the house of Jesse and he says, you know, bring me all your kids. And um, uh, Jesse brings out all of his sons and they're all really handsome, right? Handsome, beautiful, amazing, strapping, powerful looking young men. And Jesse goes through all of them and you know, Jesse says, uh, or uh, Sammy goes to all of them and he says, for sure, this is the guy. For sure, look at him, how amazing he looks. And, you know, God's like, nah, I don't care about that. I don't, isn't it awesome? I love, I, I, it makes me feel better just about me personally, to be honest, <laughs> in, that, in that deal. Not, I don't, listen, I don't think I'm, I don't think, I'm, I think I'm rather attractive, to be honest. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, the tall, the tall, G, I, my, son's, my son's here, he's like six foot tall. I don't even know how that happened, to be fair. Uh, but the tall didn't happen to, to me or to my family. But the uh, Lord says, I don't care about that. I, I care about what's on the inside. So Samuel, Samuel goes to all the kids and finally they get to, uh, you know, he's like, what's going on? Where is he? Don't you, you got any more, you know? And uh, Jesse says, yeah, well, I got one. He's, he's in a field. And some of you this year have been in your field this year. And you look around and um, you don't even see your brothers at the party because you haven't been invited to the party, right? It's, it's painful when you're just stuck in your field, but in your field is where faithfulness is built and it's where you birth greatness. I don't, I don't think David was a shepherd in a field thinking to himself, this is what I wanna do with the rest of my life. This, I wanna be in the field with the sheep. Some of you are, are, are in your field, knowing that that isn't what you're gonna do with the rest of your life. That is just where you're supposed to right now. And when I say, some of you are like, I don't even have, I don't have sheep, I have goats. I have pigs, I'm with chickens right now. I don't even, you know what I mean? You're just, uh, you're there. And 2022 has been a year of, of, of faithfulness. I remember I got done with school ministry years ago and uh, did first year and second year. There was no third year at the time. And I thought, because after two years of school of ministry, I think everyone thinks this, I was about 21 years old and I thought, um, you know, Billy Graham was gonna get my number from the Lord, honest truth. And he was gonna call me out of the blue and be like, son, I feel like you're supposed to take over my ministry. <laughs> That's how you just feel, to be honest. You spend two years of someone going, you're amazing, you're great, you're gonna change the world. And you leave going, I'm amazing and I'm great and I'm gonna change the world. When, when am I getting out of this field, right? And I got done with that and I had to get a job because I have to eat, right? So the job that I, that I got um, was, uh, was unique. If you look back on your life, it, it, honestly, you'll find that God often prepares you for where you're headed by what you're doing, right? If you're like 18, 19, 20, you don't really know that, but, but he is. And I remember the job I had, I worked at a hospital in town, um, and I was, uh, I was what they call my title um, on my badge, which I had a badge, which was so cool back then, and I had a beeper, which my kids don't even know what beepers are, but I had a beeper, which just made you feel like a champ, right? Somewhere between like a businessman and a drug dealer, all like, <laughs> you had a beeper, you know what I'm saying? I'm just being honest, right? So you had a beeper, you walked around and they would page you, right? And my, my title at the time was environmental services technician, which some of you don't know what that is, but if you do know what that is, you're just a janitor. It's a big name. It's a big name for you clean up crap. And when I say crap, I literally mean poop and things. After, when, when doctors do surgery, things are just left around, right? I mean, they put everything back that should be put back, but beyond that, things are left. And so. Someone's got to go in there and clean it up. Well, that was my job. My job was to go clean it up. So you get a little page and you walk in there and the stories I could tell you are, are gross and don't belong in church, but unique. And I remember doing that for about a year. And here's why I took that job on. I took the job because um, I wanted to be in ministry. I felt like that was the Lord had for me. But um, was, no, one ever, no one ever said, this is what you're supposed to do. I just felt like this is what I'm supposed to do. And so I took a job so that I could volunteer at, in youth group with Banning. Banning was a youth pastor here. And so I, I got to work like at, like at six in the morning so that I could be done by noon so that I could come, go home and take a shower because you needed a shower after that. And then you would, I'd come to, to church and just serve in youth ministry. 
And I did that for about a year and me and the Lord had lots of conversations in an operating room by myself, cleaning up stuff. Uh, you know, I didn't probably put it together at the time, but probably com- conversations similar to what David would have in, in his field, going, what, what, what are we doing? What's happening right now? And I remember after about a year of that, Banning called me and uh, sat me down and said, I feel like we, we want you to be on staff with us and I want you to be an associate youth pastor. And I thought, this is my moment. This is amazing. All my dreams are coming true. Do you know what an associate youth pastor is? It's an environmental services technician. <laughs> For people. That's all an associate youth pastor is. Me and the Lord had lots of chats about that. But here's what I didn't know at the time. I didn't know that in that moment, in that operating room, when all my people I went to school with, right? I went to school with Brian Johnson over there. There's Brian over there. Listen, can I just be honest right now? Pretend Brian's not here. (laughs) Prophetic people would come and they'd be like, Brian, you're gonna write songs that change the world. After about 18 of those, I was all, we get it. (laughs) We understand it. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't need to hear that no more. He's good. Where's my word? (laughs) Nothing. No one's giving me nothing, no word. I'm in a field, I'm stuck in a field. And my brother is over there getting whatever he's getting over there in the main house, right? With all the cool kids and I'm in a field stuck. But here's what I didn't know. Samuel was coming for me. Listen, in your 2022, if you were in your field, raise your hand if you're like, yep, my 22 was a field in the middle of nowhere right? I just want to declare over you, Samuel's coming for you. And, and you may not know, you may not, you may not see him, but he's coming for you. And he's going to, he's going to anoint you. You're never, you're never just a something in the kingdom that God wants you to advance. David wasn't just a shepherd, right? That, that's not, that's not what he was. Peter, James, John, not just a fisherman. Matthew, not just a tax collector. You're not just a mom. You're not just a dad. You're doing amazing things for the Lord. You're preparing yourself or you're preparing others to be great, to be amazing. You're raising kings and queens. You're getting ready to become a king or a queen. You're raising world changers and giant killers or you're getting ready to become that. This is the place you're in. This is where God has you. And if 2022 was slightly rough, good, good. Be thankful. God's got something big. He's preparing you for something big. Remember, I took that youth pastor job, obviously said yes, did that for a few years. Then they sent me to Weaverville. I got sent by the way, right? So, I mean, I had a choice, but the same choice I had staying up last night. So (laughs) he sent me to Weaverville, right? I go to Weaverville, and with Steve Backlund. You guys know Steve? Steve, hope-filled, Tigger guy, happy all the time, for no reason happy, no reason. He's just happy, right? Remember, I was there for about a week and a half, and I'm working through just a new place, you know, and Steve walks in my office. There's only two offices in Weaverville, my office and his office. And he walks in, but he walks in like, remember, uh, some of you are old enough. Uh, remember how Kramer used to walk into Jerry's apartment like this? I can't do it, but he's walked in. Steve walked in my office and he looked at me, said, what Goliath are you running after? What? <laughs> I said, what? He said, what Goliath are you running after? I, 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 don't, I don't know, Steve. I don't know. And he goes, okay. And he closed the door. And I thought, this, we're, we're going we're to have a problem. This is what we're going to have. A couple, couple days goes by, three or four days, you know, and he comes in again. What Goliath are you running after? Steve, I don't know. It's Wednesday. I'm literally trying to prepare for youth group. It's my only job. I just need to do youth group. Okay. Out of the weekend. Another three, four days. Opens the door. 
What Goliath are you running after? I think I made something up random because I was just tired. I was like, I don't know. The devil, I don't know. <laughs> to be honest. He was like, you, you could do better. And then shut the door. I went home and told Leah, I need a Goliath. She's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I don't know, but Steve wants me to run after one. I need one. Help me find, find me a Goliath somewhere. I need to find a Goliath. So I racked my brain, to be honest. I was like, I need, a, I need to find a Goliath. Here's, uh, here's what, what I didn't know. Steve was actually getting me ready for something that I had no clue he was getting me ready for. David, in the next chapter, 1 Samuel 17, he faces Goliath. Now listen, when he faces Goliath, he's still a shepherd, right? Keep in mind, he just got anointed to be the next king. You're amazing, you're powerful, you're wonderful. By the way, keep doing what you're doing. Well, that doesn't sound, that doesn't, that doesn't sound fun. But David goes back to being a shepherd. He gets told by his dad, go check on your brothers. He goes to check on his brothers. Then the story, he leaves his sheep, checks on his brothers. In the middle of checking on his brothers, he hears of an opportunity, right? Hey, that guy on the mountain over there who's talking trash, if someone kills him, you get a wife. She's pretty good looking, awesome, right? No taxes, I'm down with that. No taxes forever. That sounds great. I get a seat at the table, this, this is great. David asks, Three times. Explain that to me one more time. What do I get? What do I get? Right? He, he does it next to his brother and his brother says, his brother gets uh, offended at him for even asking the question, right? The Amplified Version, I believe, says something like, David said, what did I do? I'm just, I'm just asking a question. What did I do? Listen, be prepared. When you ask the right questions, everyone around you is gonna be slightly offended by, by what you're doing. But in the middle of that, David decides to face Goliath. And the Bible says that David ran after Goliath. Obviously we know because of his preparation in, in the field in those moments. But, but David was prepared to run hard after Goliath. Listen, 2023, we, we declared already is your year of victory, but you're gonna have to run after something, right? You don't just sit there and go, it's my year of victory. I'm, I'm, I'm victorious. I'm doing things. You're not, no. You, Banning said this once. When I, it's the most profound message I've ever heard Banning give. Well, I don't know if that's true, but I like it. He said, do you know what the difference between the people that do something for the Lord and the people that don't do something for the Lord? Do you know what the difference is between that? Like you, everyone was quiet. Tell me the secret. Here's what he said. The people that do something for the Lord do something. I was like, you're a genius, Banning. This is genius level revelatory stuff we're getting right now. You're gonna have to figure out what Goliath's running after. I spent a year with Steve, honestly, trying to figure out what the heck is my Goliath. I don't even know. If you can figure that out, then you can run after Goliath when the opportunity comes up. You need to prepare that in your heart. Remember, um, I took my kids to my kids. My, my kids, they're little, uh, took them to watch Spider-Man. You ever done this with kids? Spider-Man, and then you brought them home. Take a kid who's never seen Spider-Man to watch Spider-Man. Bring them back to your house and just wait and watch and see what happens. They are Spider-Man. They are on your furniture. They're on countertops, right? They're on top, they're on top of things all the time. Why? because something got in them when they're watching that movie that goes, I, th I think that I'm built for something bigger than this. I think that I may be Spider-Man, <laughs> right? That should happen to us when we read our Bible. We should go, I'm built for something better than this. That ha when, I was, when I was young, I, watched, I remember watching, um, do you remember watching Rocky? First time, my dad showed me Rocky. Listen, when you're young, now some of you guys don't know. You don't know because you're, you're like 20 something. But when you watched Rocky for the first time, you were like, I'm gonna fight anybody right now. I'm not even kidding. Can you fight? Sure. I'm pretty sure I could fight. How do you know? Well, I watched two hours of Rocky. 
right? If you make it to Rocky IV, you're in your backyard with rocks. You know what I'm saying? Like you're trying to figure this out. It's, that's how we should wake up every day in the kingdom. Ready, ready to fight. Because God wants us to take ground. Let me just tell you, if you're fight, if you choose to fight, you don't have to choose that. You don't have to. But if you choose to fight, you're gonna have moments of unique challenge, right? As much as Rocky is victorious, which I think we should probably all yell Adrian later, maybe, but <laughs> as, as much as Rocky is victorious, um, there's a beautiful part in the movie where he's on the ground, beat up. And, uh, you know, the old trainer guy is like, get up, Rock. Remember this part? No, nobody cares about this movie. Anyway, get up. Well, I just tried to do it. I, that's the best I had. It's the best I got. If the trainer was Mexican, I'd done a really good version, but he wasn't in the movie. He was a white guy. So that's the best I got is get up, Rock. Anyway, uh, but you're gonna have to figure out, here's, you're gonna run hard, you're gonna do stuff, and there's a potential, a possibility to, to get knocked down. And you're gonna have to figure out how you're gonna get up. It is, it, it is a unique challenge to be able to get back up. And it's something that you have to work to instill in those around you, or you're gonna have to put that in yourself. My, my kids, when they were little, Bella got a, a horse. Um, Huh, she got a horse. I got a horse. And um, it's my horse, I, you know, anyway, it's Bella's horse. That's what she says. But she got this horse. And so she wants to ride it around. So she's riding the horse. And the horse, is, the horse that Bella got, we got it from some friends. And the horse is amazing and beautiful and knows more about riding than, than my daughter, right? So Bella really doesn't know what she's doing really besides sit and just sit there and, you know, do a few little things here and there. And, and she's learning. Well, while Bella's sitting there, um, she kind of taps the horse and she does it in a way without knowing that the horse does a lead change. We don't know what this is, but the horse has a little lead change. So the horse kind of bounces to switch the lead from his one leg to the other leg. And the horse bounces and my little girl kind of freaks out and she kind of yanks the horse, which is a no-no, right? So the horse doesn't like that. So the horse let her know, I don't like that. And the horse tossed her right? Not mean, just tossed her because she's little. So just, you know, just gently tossed her against the side of a barn. Um, <laughs> honest. So I watched as she went upside down and like a movie, her whole like flat against the barn and slid down. And there's a black mark on the barn where her helmet is, right? So I run over and I'm like, are you okay? She says, yeah. Um, which I'm not sure if she is okay, but that is the right answer if someone ever asks you. <laughs> If you're, if you're Mexican, that is always the right answer. So, uh, are you okay? Yes. So, are you okay? And then I tell her, okay, well, you know, she kind of gets her breath and she's a little bit frightened. And I'm like, hey, you, uh, you know, um, you got to get back up on the horse. She said, how come? I said, I, I, don't, I don't know. That's what they say. They say you have to, you know, so I'm telling her, like something about fear and stuff. Just get on the horse. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to get back on there. So we stick her back on the horse and she rides around and she's like, can I be done now? Sure. I don't know how long they say you have to get back up on it for. So yeah, five minutes, good, get off. Well, she, you know, she does that. I, I really, all my kids have these, have these experiences. You know, I was out here on the, on the field out here once with Diego. He, he loves baseball. He's probably 11. We're playing baseball. And, and at 11, I'm throwing pretty hard to my kids, like as hard as I can throw uh, to my kids. He's 10 or 11. And it's getting late though. The sun's going down but he still wants to play. And I, he's throwing at me hard. And I am, you know, I'm not the, the greatest, you know, I don't throw super hard, but I can throw harder than 11 year old. Let's be clear about that. <laughs> so I'm throwing it hard and I throw this ball and I watch it. it, has a little tail to it and it's getting dark and he puts his glove up and it misses his glove and it hits him right in the forehead. And he kind of screams a little bit and he covers his forehead and he hits the ground and I run up and he's, you know, he's crying and he goes, I missed it. And I'm like, yes, 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 you did. That's what, that is what we're telling mom. You missed it. <laughs> That's the honest truth. And I was like, say, what happened? Tell me what happened one more time. <laughs> you missed it. Good. 
you missed. Great. But look, he missed it. And the next day we play catch again. Why? Because I can't have a kid afraid of the ball. It doesn't work. Cruz, he's on the front row. He just straight out, he just did, he, I don't know how we did this, but he's like, I'd like to take jujitsu. Sure, that sounds fun. You know, let's do that. So with his school, he gets to take a jujitsu class. So he goes in there and his first day and he comes home and I'm like, how was it? He was like, oh, it was, it was all right. Well, details, what happened? He's like, well, I, I was in front of this, per, this person, this girl, and I look down and she has more little stripes on her belt than I do on mine. So I figure she's better than me. And uh, it's my first day and I sit there and the, the, the coach, you know, says go or something, blows a whistle, does something. And he goes, I blinked and she's on my back and she's choking me. <laughs> so so I, I, I'm like, did you tap? She, he goes, yeah, it's gonna, gonna die. So yeah, I tap, <laughs> I tap. I'm like, well, what happened? She's like, we did it again. And then she just choked me again. <laughs> and she choked me a couple times and she yanked my arm out a couple times. And then she, you know, twisted my leg and then whatever. And I'm like, well, how many times that happened? He's like, no, that's all that happened. It was, <laughs> I just went there and got beat up and welcome to, welcome to jiu-jitsu. It's good. You going to go again? I mean, well, yeah, of course I'm going to go again. You can't, you can't end getting choked. It's like that, that is the right answer. You can't end getting choked. Listen, we heard a lot about, a lot about David, but in 2 Samuel uh, chapter 12, verse 20, David, David, oh man, David had some rough moments, but um, he was going through a difficult, difficult moment. He had screwed up major, royally. Adultery had, had the woman that he committed adultery with, had her husband killed. His child is on his deathbed. He's laid out before the Lord and his child dies. He asks his servants, my child dead? They say yes. Then the scripture says this, that David got himself up, cleaned up, anointed himself, changed his clothes, and worshiped. He got himself up, cleaned up, anointed himself, changed his clothes, and worshiped. Some of you are in a fight, and some of you have been knocked down. I want to be really clear. Some of you were knocked down because it happened to you. You're facing whatever Apollo, whatever, right? And you get hit and you get knocked down. Some of you, you slipped and fell on your own stuff and you just, oops, you had a, I'd call a slip and fall, right? Either way, you know what the right answer is? Get up, wash yourself off, anoint yourself, remember what the Lord said, change your clothes and let's go worship. That's the right answer. Failure only ends in defeat if you quit. It only ends in defeat if you quit. Failure is only fatal if you die, let's not. That's not what we're called to. We're called to take ground. 2023 is gonna be a year of taking ground, a victorious year, right? A year, as we mentioned right after worship, of, of God, giving back to you. We'll end with this, Jeremiah 29, 11. You guys all know the scripture. For I know the plans and thoughts I have for you, says the Lord, plans for peace and well-being, not for disaster, but to give you a future and a hope. The context there is the Jews are in exile in, in Babylon. They just got word they're gonna do that for another 70 years. They're, they're challenged by who is leading them, by who's controlling their life. There's challenges all around them. And in the middle of that, they get a word. Hey, I have plans for you. I have plans for you. God is not limited by whatever your circumstances are. He just isn't. And, and I'm, I'm praying like all of you for our city and our community and, and all that stuff. But because your boss is no good, doesn't affect God's plans for you, yeah. right? because elections didn't work out the way you want, it doesn't affect God's plans for you. God has plans for you. And the only way those plans don't happen is if you just quit. In the previous scripture before that, the Lord tells 
the Jews, hey, you know what you need to do? Get up, have some kids, get married, do some stuff. I got some plans for you. So with that, let's stand up together. We, uh, we declared already, but let's do this one more time. And I want us to do it uh, like we mean it, right? For some of you who are more competitive, let's beat first service. Okay. Uh, Bishop Garlington, uh, he was here years ago. He said, nothing happens in the kingdom until something is set. He took us through scripture where people would declare and, and God would move. So we're gonna declare over us, over our church family in 2023. You ready? Repeat after me. 2023, 2023 will be a year of victory. For, well, if you say it like that, a few of you will get that. <laughs> All right, ready one more time? Let's mean it. 2023, 2023 will be a year of victory. Will be a year of victory. My, anointing is My anointing is coming. I'm ready to run, I'm ready to run. After, my after my Goliath. There is nothing, there is nothing. The, enemy can do the enemy can do that will keep me down. Keep me down. God has plans for me. Big plants, Big plants. Huge, plants. huge plants. Oh, I, that's so good. I love that. Listen, let me just pray over you. The Lord has bigger plans over you than you could even think or imagine. Lord, we declare over this house as a, as a family of believers. Lord, may 2023 demonstrate the goodness of God. May the goodness of God be seen in, in each of us, in our lives. Lord, help us to be thankful for the field moments. Lord, help us to run after Goliath when, giving, when given the opportunity. Lord, thank you so much for what you're gonna do in us. May we never quit. May you find us faithful in all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Give it up for Gabe. That was one of the best messages in 2023. Just kidding. <laughs> you are my, one of, hands down, my favorite preachers, Gabe Valenzuela. I love you so much. Um, Jamila and I are just gonna close really quickly, but when, right before uh, Gabe got up to speak, when worship was ending, I saw a journal open. Um, oftentimes at the beginning of a new year, you start a new journal. Um, and with the journal opened and there were two questions on the journal. And well, there was one question, but Gabe helped with the second. Um, what are you on the planet to do? Was the question in the journal. Why are you on the planet? And I, I feel like that there's an invitation from the Lord off of this message of just such beautiful worship today. And then just that powerful word of, of just vision and getting back up. But uh, just extend your hands. We're just gonna pray through this one more time. Um, so Father, I thank you for what you have called each person to do on the planet, that uh, even in the future, maybe you're overwhelmed, maybe you're like, I don't even know if God is real and you're here today. Um, he is, and he is with you, and there is nobody like him. There is no one that satisfies like him. So Father, I, I speak purpose over this room this morning. I see the word purpose, and, and Father, that you would just show us individually what we are on the planet to do and to accomplish, that, that the only that we can do, Father. And, and I pray, Father, that you'd also show us what our Goliath is, who our Goliath is, and how we're supposed to fight against that. Um, and that Nothing will overwhelm or, uh, or overtake us because you are giving us what exactly we need to do to overtake that Goliath in our life. So what are we on the planet to do and what is our Goliath? Lord, I, I pray that this would be such a year of knowing you. God, for every person that we would know you more and whatever it takes, um, the phrase, uh, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. One bite at a time that no one would be overwhelmed this morning. There would be just a victorious spirit like Gabe prayed and that one foot after the other, we would accomplish your purpose. And maybe it's a boring year or a rough year or a tough week or a tough month, but God, one foot after the other, faithfulness that you are before us, you are with us, God, leading, lighting the way. And we just honor you, King Jesus, in all that we say and do. Amen. Amen, amen. All right, Jamila's gonna bring it home. Oh, I love that. We have been given such great words about what the Lord plans to do with us this year. There's a group of us, though, that I wanna make sure I give an opportunity to. We've heard about Goliath and how David overcame him. It was through the power of the Lord. 
He said, I can go after this because the Lord was with me when I was in the field. When I had to attack the bear, the Lord helped me do it. When I had to kill the lion, the Lord helped me do it. And one Goliath that all mankind has had to face and the Lord overcame for us is the Goliath of sin. Second Corinthians 5.21 says, he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God. Not like righteousness, but the actual righteousness. A trade was made that we would slay the Goliath of sin over our lives and begin to walk out the true calling, which is us reconciled to God. That is his purpose for all mankind. And you might be one who came here today and you said, you know what, January 1, I'm taking 23 by storm and I'm gonna do it with the Lord inside me and with me. And you know you need to give your life to the Lord today. You want him to be master and father and friend and brother. And so I wanna give you this opportunity. If that's you and you came here and you said, I'm gonna make a change. If they give me an opportunity to lift my hands or to come up front, I'm gonna be the first one to do it. Would you raise your hand with me and say, Jesus, you are Lord and I give myself to you. I see you in the back. I see you in the front. I see you back there. I see your hand. If someone next to you is raising their hand, celebrate like the angels. A son has come home. He has made the Lord his father. God, we thank you. We thank you for your children, Lord. And if that's you, everyone pray with them. Father, you are Lord over my life. Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Thank you for taking my place on the cross and giving me life eternal. I now assume my new role as your son or your daughter. And I give you lordship over my life. In the name of Jesus. You friend have now taken on the family of God. You are welcome and we are so excited that you're with us. Up front we have Freedom Team members who want to speak with you and pray with you about this decision, would you come forward and if you, um, if you are with them, you brought them to church, come with them. This is a major step. That, if those two gentlemen and the one up front, come on up and let us pray with you. Ministry Team, if you would come forward, we'd love to have you come and uh, partner with those who want prayer this morning. Online, if you prayed that prayer with me, Put it in the chat. We have a discipleship class that starts at 1230 every Sunday where you can learn what it means to walk with the Lord. And we would love for you to join that. They're pu putting a link in the comment section for you to be a part of that. And as the ministry team comes forward and those who just received Christ come forward, you guys, we... I just wanna say it again. We have a great year in store because we have a great God inside. Lord, I bless this congregation and this family. Thank you for what you're doing. Bless this week. And for those of you who can, make sure you come tonight for an extended encounter night at our 6 p.m. service. We'll see you then. Love you so much. Ministry team, ministry team, we'd love to have you here. How amazing was that? That was such a good word from Gabe. And I just want to um, reiterate what Jamila just shared. If you don't know Jesus... Um, he is the only way, He is the only truth, and He is the only life. And no one comes to the Father except through Him. And today, if you want to know the Father, if you want to know that you're saved, and you want to, to walk out this life where He takes down the Goliath of sin in your life and makes you into His righteousness, then type into the chat, um, I want to know Jesus, or, or show me how. Um, there is a discipleship class at 12.30 like Jamila said and we want to plug you in. Yeah. You but can go to Bethel.com slash start here for more information on how to get connected into that class today. We want to make sure that you're discipled, that you are connected, yeah. part of the family and that you know what it means to live a life following Jesus. Yeah, I loved how Gabe talked to us who, who've had a rough 2022, you know, that we might have been knocked to the ground like Rocky Balboa. Um, but it's time to, to get up mm -hmm. and to, to pick yourself up, wash yourself off, yeah. 
anoint yourself with oil and change your clothes and begin to worship God. God wants you to worship Him with your life and worship means you're going to take down some giants. You're called to change your world uh, where God has placed you. Yeah, I love how he said that it doesn't matter whether circumstances have happened to you or whether it's a mistake that we've made that's knocked us to the ground. It doesn't matter. We can just wash ourselves off and come before God again, come before His throne and just worship Him. And that's what it's about. doesn't matter what last year held. Today is a new day. It's a new year. Every day is a new day. Every moment can be a new moment where you can just encounter wash yourself off, come before the Lord and worship Him. And we can do that every day. Yeah. When I was driving here this morning, I felt like the Lord said, tell them I'm I'm the finisher of their faith. I'm the author and the perfecter of their faith. And many people online are listening right now and you're in this point of confusion or you don't know what this year is going to hold. I want to tell you, your good, good Father is about to complete things and, and His dreams for us. I love how Gay brought up that Scripture again, that, that God has plans to prosper us. Jeremiah 29, 11, plans to give us a future and a hope. You can rest assured that your good, good Father <laughs> is going to do incredibly abundantly above all you could ask or imagine this year. So get ready. Get ready. Clean yourself off. Yeah. Dust yourself off. Get get anointed with the testimonies from from your past and put on your worship and watch God take down some giants through you this year. Yeah. It's so important to as you said look at your testimonies but also look at other people's testimonies. Come on and wash yourselves in those. Renew your mind with the testimonies of what God has done and take it as a promise. Bill talked about there are so many promises in the Bible that are for us and He's just looking for someone to land on. There are testimonies out there of what the Lord has done in people's lives where redemption has happened, where salvation has happened, where financial breakthrough has happened, where healing has happened. Whatever that you're contending for this year, go and get testimonies of people who have received breakthrough in those areas so that they can become a reality in your life. Because as you heard it said, what He's done once, He wants to do it again. Yeah, and if you're in a place where you're like, I know all that, but I still feel flat, worship. Yeah. Just worship. Get in your car, turn up the music, go for a drive and worship Him from the depths of your being. It's by grace that you've been saved. It's by grace that you will continue. And God is the one who causes you to to see incredible miracles happen. You can't make that happen, but He will make that happen, guaranteed. So good. 2023 is going to be an amazing year. We're believing that for you and with you, uh, that we pray that it's going to be so blessed and that you see the hand of the Lord on your life. Yeah. Thank you for joining us this morning. Please don't forget tonight, 6 p.m., we have our encounter service, wow. encounter night. Come on. Tune in again. Join us for that. It's going to be powerful. Yep. The Lord has got massive plans for your life this year. It's a year of victory. Yes. Yep. We look forward to seeing you guys next time.
Just lift up your voices. Lift up a new song to the Lord. Just sing a new song in heavenly tongues with words. Just sing a new song to the Lord.
You have led. 